We were just talking about the things that make you smile and make you happy. Yeah. Yeah. And Imagine people always start off by saying, and how are you today? And I usually say, oh, pretty much the same as yesterday. Maybe, More... maybe the same as I'll be tomorrow. No, are, are you a bit continue, of a... Continue, continuity is everything at my age. Are you a bit of a gloomy person? On the outside, but underneath I'm, I'm chuckling away all the time. What are the signs? Well, I'm looking for them now. <laughs> usually, usually when I'm entertaining my cat by playing the flute, I have one, one cat, a couple of dogs who hate the flute, but one cat who just goes do lally when he hears uh, me I've play. I've got the... to ask you. Oh, yeah, so, uh, well, we were just talking about animals, obese animals. Yeah. Are your cats and dogs in good health in terms of the right weight, and do you feed them snacks? Um, well, I have a cat called Fat Pants, and... Um, <laughs> He's actually called Samir, but he gets referred to it in an undignified well, way as Fat Pants. And, and a dog, it was a Patterdale Terrier from Yorkshire, and I call him Fatterdale. So that gives you a clue. Uh, so, Jethro Tull, now what we, what we know is that you are multi talented, you can play many instruments. You just said you play your flute to the cat. Can, we, can you play whatever you play to your cat? Just a little bit, so well, we get a sense of yeah, what, what does the trick. The thing is, when I grew up, Everybody wanted to be a guitar player, like me. And then I, then I heard Eric Clapton and Jimi Hendrix and thought, better find another job. So I tried to learn to play the flute, not in a way that was typical. I mean, you can play nicely. Or you can play nasty. And I, I chose the nasty route because it was, it was competing with the electric guitar at a time when nobody was using the flute in a rock context. So that's what I did. Love the outfit there. Oh well. Did you yeah. see that? Were you looking? Not really. No. It was a, it was I, a headband I try, and. I try to avert my gaze. <laughs> You've had. We mentioned some of the people you've been working alongside over the years, uh, and there have been some very interesting bands that you've been close to, and uh, you know, working alongside. Yeah, I mean, the peer the peer group is is amazing. You know, from the 70s, the, there were just so many people who came. A very creative period of time for British music. I, I think perhaps at a time when we rather outdid the Americans for a while in coming up with new stuff and new exciting ideas. They called it progressive rock, which I'm a, very happy to be a part of, but prog rock is that rather teasing way of describing it. Yeah, that is me. <laughs> that is, yeah what, a, yeah, what a lad. Goodness me. Those outfits. Who was the most talented, um, or what was the most talented outfit you played with? Outfit in the sense of a band, musician, as yeah, to a yeah. Yes, um, yeah, I was famous for the cod piece. <laughs> Were you really? It mysteriously <laughs> disappeared from the drawer. My wife says, "Oh, it rotted, and I threw it away." But I am convinced I will one day find it on eBay. What, what, what Your rotting there, cod piece. Was there competition amongst those those <laughs> extravagantly dressed bands at that time as to who could look the most extreme? silly? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, people did look, yes, silly. I mean, it was, it was a light-hearted thing, so people did dress up in those days, and it was, um, you know, it was part of, I suppose, selling yourself. But looking back on it, there have been sillier outfits from not so uh, distant times. So I think it's a tradition that goes on. Once you're out there in front of people, people do tend to, you know, just, just get larger than life. And you know, when you've, when you've been in the business for f at least 50 years, Fifth Jethro Tull's 50th mm -hmm. anniversary tour, but you've been in the business for 50 years. You are now at a, a point where you can use your name to highlight issues that are important to you. And did I read that you um, work in churches? Uh, well, yes, I do. Every year, do do a few charitable to shows to help in, in some great cathedrals, yeah. and medieval cathedrals particularly. People forget that these are supported only by the public. It's, it's not a it's not a, a state religion, so. Really, these great buildings, many of which are a thousand years old, to keep, literally to keep the lid on, to keep the roof on, I mean, they do require a lot of maintenance and upkeep. And I do this not as a Christian, although I'm a supporter of the, 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 the culture and tradition of Christianity, but because I really have a love for those buildings. So every year I do two or three cathedrals, and all the ticket money goes to the cathedral and pays for about two days of heating and admin and maintenance That's the thing, and so on. They cost so much to maintain. But, yeah, it, it's a little drop in a very big ocean. Do you know, ever since you said about playing the flute for your cat, I just think maybe that's the next album. Well, I've already Which done that. Been have, there, done that. Have you? Have you done? Yeah, I did a solo album probably about 15 years ago called Rupee's Dance. We just got a little kitten called Rupee. We used to dance around on her hind legs. And so. it was for the cat, essentially. Well, it, yes. <laughs> In desperation, trying to find an album title that hadn't been used before. It's been really lovely to see you here this morning. Thank well, you so much. Indeed, very Thank nice you. To be Good with luck you. with the tour as well. Yeah. Jethro yeah. Tell's 50th anniversary tour begins in April.